दोस्तों सुप्रीम कोर्ट में आज रिजर्वेशन में एस टी एस सी रिजर्वेशन कोटा के ऊपर जो जजमेंट आया है सात जजेस का छ एक से उसमें दूसरा जजमेंट जस्टिस बी आर गवई ने प्रोनाउंस किया था तो आइए सुनते हैं जस्टिस बी आर गवई ने अपने जजमेंट में क्या बोला है Go through the erudite and scholarly judgment authored by the Honorable the Chief Justice of India. We will complete agreement with the conclusions arrived at by the Honorable CJ. However, in addition to the conclusions arrived at by the Learned Chief Justice, I have also arrived at some additional conclusions to which the Learned Chief Justice has also agreed. Therefore, I thought necessary to give my separate opinion. In the beginning, I have referred to the celebrated. Speech of Dr. Ambedkar on 25th of November 1949, the Constitutional Assembly, wherein he has said that unless we have a social democracy, the political democracy of would be of no use. And then he had warned us about the contradictions in the economic and social plan <coughs> of the country. I refer to the there's the history as to how the term Shirul caste has come in the Constitution. From the original depressed classes, I refer to the census report of 1891, the Indian Statutory Commission report of 1930, census report of 1931, the Government of India Act 1935, and the Government of India Schedule Caste Order of 1936. I also refer to the debates in the Constitutional Assembly with regard to Article 300A and 300B, which are now Article 341 and 342. I refer to and analyze. The following judgments of the Supreme Court, this court in the case of M R Balaji versus State of Mysore, State of Kerala versus N M Thomas, Akhil Bharti Shushit Karmachari Sun versus Union of India, K C Vasant Kumar versus State of Karnataka, Indra Sani versus Union of India, Y M Nagraj versus Union of India, N L Singh versus Narayan Gupta. I have considered the interplay between Article 14. 16, Before reading all conclusions, I would read some of the observations that I made in my judgment. Anatomically, I observed that the basic error that appears to have been committed in E V H Nayya is that it proceeds on the understanding that Article 341 has to do with the reservation of the seats. I have already discussed here in above. Article 341 and 342 are only with regard to identification of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Article 341 and 342, read with clause 24 and 25 of Article 366 of the Constitution, provide that those castes included in the presidential list shall be deemed to be scheduled caste and scheduled tribe for the purposes of the Constitution. However, at the cost of repetition, I reiterate that Article 341 and 342 do not deal with reservation. The provisions of affirmative action during reservation, the matter of public employment, are contained in Article 16 of the Constitution of India. And I observe that, as already discussed here in above, this court in Indra Gandhi has held that further classification of backward classes into backward and more backward classes is permissible in law. By that corollary, if a state finds that any of the castes, races, tribes, or parts of Or groups within the caste, races, or tribes are not adequately represented. Would the state be denied its right to make a special provision for them? I find that, as has been observed by this court in various judgments, it is the duty of the state to give preferential treatment to the backward class of citizens who are not adequately represented. If the state, while discharging that duty, finds that certain categories within the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are not adequately represented, And only the people belonging few of the categories are enjoying the entire benefit without for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Can the state be denied its right to give more preferential treatment for such categories? In my view, 
the answer would be in the negative, since the same would not amount to tinkering with the facility condition. No doubt that if the state decides to provide 100% of the reservation for scheduled caste to one or more categories enlisted in the presidential list in that state to the exclusion of some categories, it may amount to tinkering with that list because, in effect, it would amount to denial of benefit of reservation to those scheduled caste categories which have been excluded. In my view, that would, in effect, amount to deletion of the said categories from the presidential list notified under Article 341 of the Constitution which power is exclusively reserved with the parliament. In my opinion, such exercise would not be permitted. The ground realities cannot be relied, denied. Even amongst the scheduled caste, there are some categories who have received more inhuman treatment for centuries and generations as compared to other categories. The hardships and the backwardness which these categories have suffered historically would differ from category to category. In my view, therefore, merely because they are part of a single or a combined presidential list, it cannot be said that they form a part of a homogeneous group. I therefore have no hesitation in holding that EV Chennai has been wrongly decided. The concept of subclassification was sought to be attacked on the ground that this would lead to giving reservation for political reasons. It was argued that a political party power to gain political advantage may provide special treatment to a particular class the scheduled caste. I see no merit in the argument. In a case like the present one, if a classification is made, it will have to be established that the group carved out from the larger group is more disadvantageous and not adequately represented. The result of classification would be to provide more preferential treatment to this more disadvantageous and less represented group. The ultimate object would be to achieve real equality amongst all the subgroups in the larger group. In any case, as has been held by judicial pronouncement, when the state does such an exercise, it will have to be supported by an empirical data. Unless the state or the commission comes to a finding that the group card out needs special treatment, is more disadvantageous and not adequately represented as compared to the other categories in the group, such as classification, would not stand the scrutiny of the law. I therefore find that the fear that is posed is not substantiated. I find that the attitude of the categories in the presidential list opposing such a subclassification is that of a person in the general compartment of the train. <coughs> Firstly, the persons outside the compartment struggle to get into the general compartment. However, once they get inside it, they make every attempt, every attempt possible to prevent the persons outside such a compartment from entering it. In fact, what the people belonging to the categories who are availing large chunk of reservations and denying a special treatment to the less privileged amongst them are doing is what the people from the higher caste have done to those people for centuries, as a result of which backward classes were kept away from the mainstream of the society for ages, for no fault of theirs. Only on account of the principle of social and economic justice, as enshrined under the Constitution, they have availed themselves of the benefits of special treatment. However, when the state endeavors to ensure that the said benefit percolates to more underprivileged and less adequately represented, the sections from the scheduled caste who oppose them stand in the shoes of those who oppress them. In M. Ragraj, the court also applied the principles of quantifiable data and similar even in case of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. The correctness of the same was considered by General Singh. So General Singh held that insofar as applicability of quantifiable data on the backwardness insofar as scheduled caste and scheduled tribes is concerned, M. Nagaraj was not correct. However, insofar as the applicability of similar principle even to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe is concerned, it upheld the view taken in M. Raj. In doing so, General Singh is basically relying on the judgment of seven judge bench of this court in N. M. Thomas. The view taken in General Singh has also been approved in Davinder Singh. The correctness of the view taken in General Singh and Davinder Singh is not questioned. However, in the present reference, we are dealing with the question about equality amongst the group of unequal. I find it appropriate to consider the said issue also. Putting the children of the parents from the scheduled caste scheduled tribe on account of benefit of reservation 
have reached a high position and switched to socially, economically, and educationally backward, and the children of parents doing manual work in the villages in the same category would defeat the constitutional mandate. However, I may observe that taking into consideration that the constitution itself recognizes the scheduled caste and scheduled type to be the most backward sections of the society, the parameters for exclusion from affirmative action of the persons belonging to this category may not be the same as applicable to other classes. If a person from such a category, by bagging the benefit of reservation, achieved a position of a tune or maybe a sweeper, would continue to belong to a socially, economically, and educationally backward class. At the same time, people from this category, who after having availed the benefits of reservation, have reached the high echelons in life, cannot be considered to be socially, economic, and educationally backward, so as to continue availing the benefit of affirmative action. They have already reached a stage where on their own accord, walk out of the special provisions and give way to the deserving and needy. I may again fully refer to the observation of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. I quote, history shows that where ethics and economics come in conflict, victory is always with economics. Western interests have never been known to have willingly divested themselves unless there was sufficient force to compel them, unquote. I am therefore of the view that the state must evolve a policy for identifying the criminal layer, even the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe, so as to exclude them from the benefit of affirmative action. In my view, only this and this alone can achieve the real equality as enshrined under the Constitution. I read my conclusion. I therefore hold that Evi Chinaya held that such classification among the scheduled caste for the purpose of giving more beneficial treatment to a group with a larger group of the scheduled caste is not permissible, does not lay down a good law. That subclassification among the scheduled caste for giving more beneficial treatment is permissible in law. That while doing so, the state will have to justify that the group for which more beneficial treatment is provided is inadequately represented as compared to other castes in the said list. That while doing so, the state will have to justify the same on the basis of empirical data that the subclass in whose favor such more beneficial treatment is provided is not adequately represented. That, however, while providing for subclassification, the state would not be entitled to reserve 100% seat available for scheduled caste in favor of a subclass to the exclusion of other castes in the case. That such a subclassification would be permissible only if there is a reservation for a subclass as well as a larger class. That the finding of M. Nagaraj, Jandil Singh, and Devinder Singh to the effect that criminal air principle is also applicable to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes lays down the correct position of law. That the criteria for exclusion of the criminal air from the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes for the purpose of affirmative action would be different from the criteria as applicable to the other backward classes. Before I part with that, my judgment, I place on record my deep appreciation for the valuable assistance rendered by the learned council. So, this was the first question of the Justice B.R. Ambedkar. जिसको आपने सुना अगर ये वीडियो आपको अच्छा लगा है तो मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें इस वीडियो को लाइक करें शेयर करें और मेंबरशिप ले लें इसके अलावा आप नोटिफिकेशन की घंटी बजा दें जिससे आने वाले वीडियो आपको टाइम पे मिलते रहे धन्यवाद